just the, um, you know, I'm, I am a true proponent that Christians should never be surprised by the miraculous. Amen. I'm a little high, so turn me down just a little bit. Because um, the miraculous is who we are. There's not a person in here. Whether or not you're born again, um, it is significant, but it does not preclude or exclude or necessarily include you for the miraculous. It is your mindset. Everything about you is supernatural. And the world is totally telling you that what I'm saying right now is a lie. You, sir, need to move up front. I hear the Lord say that, so I'm going to move you up front. Can I do that? Sure I can. I'm the one with the mic. <laughs> Just kidding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I want to take an opportunity real quick while, I, while I'm thinking about it and uh, before I get into the message. First of all, I want to welcome everybody. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you to our first-time guests. We're certainly glad you're here. Would you give them a hand? Amen. Um, Behave, okay? Behave. <laughs> so you what? I, I say that because only at life points. You got people dancing up. The people carrying the baskets dancing up. The, I mean, you know. Where, when's the last time you've been to church where, where they do that, amen? I mean, you know. But uh, there's purpose behind everything we do. The joy of the Lord is our strength, amen? I want to welcome our, our YouTube audience. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate you. We are LifePoint Christian Faith Center. If this is your first time tuning in, we are located at 1220 First Avenue in the city of Coralville, Iowa, here at the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center. We're here on a temporary basis, but we're here right now. We have a warm seat of welcome for you. We've got plenty of room. We'd love to have you come down and check us out. If you're unable to come, please contact us. Let us know. We have a van service which is available. We've got a lot of different things that we can get to you. We certainly are delighted that you took the time to tune in with us. Thank you. Get something to write with. Take some notes. This is not baby church, so you'll be in for some information that'll bless your life, but you got to take that information and do something with it. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome our first time guest and our YouTube audience as well. Amen. 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 Uh, I want to uh, just, I don't want to belabor the issue, but <clears throat> in my preparation for what God has for you and, and uh, my ability to communicate it will be clearly by the power of the spirit. Say amen to that. Amen. I'm not that smart, uh, nor do I ever want to be actually. Uh, I, I, I want to be somebody who can simply, God says something, I'm going to run with it and do whatever he says. Amen. amen. Not a bad way to be, oh, by the way. Uh, while I'm getting my notes together, I'm going to invite you to turn in your Bibles to Galatians, the second chapter. Um, I've got a few different notes and try not to go too many different ways here. One of my colleagues uh, he talks about rabbit trails. Um, he's sitting in the back right now. He's the, he's the king of rabbit trails. <laughs> Sometimes I wish he'd follow some of those rabbit trails, but love you, brother. Amen. His lovely wife. Um, I want to say this, though, and this has nothing to do with today's message other than you need to hear it. OK, uh, our society is become um, inflamed. We know this divisive. A lot of things going on. Trust me, it is not a Democratic problem or a Republican problem, problem or a Green Party or an independent. It is the devil that is inciting all of this. OK, now, rather than be uh, ultra spiritual, I'm just going to tell you these uh, two words. Go vote. Stop complaining. If you complain and you ain't voting, you need to shut up. OK, anyway, I did say it. And I said it out loud and I mean it. If you want to make a change, go vote. If you ain't going to vote, you need to just close your mouth. Oh, it's going to be one of those days today. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Because, see, I'm on God's side. That's all I know. God has done so much for me. <clears throat> excuse me. And everything he did for me, I couldn't do for myself. I simply had to believe that he loved me enough that he would do a work in me. And uh, it didn't look like it when it started out. But he's gotten, he's still working and still causing me to grow. How about you? And because of that, that means that there's more information that you're going to need before you die. If you were as grown as you needed to be, you wouldn't need any more information. If you were as wealthy as you needed to be, you wouldn't need any more money. Right. If physically you were as good as you ever were going to get in your physical body, then you wouldn't need to get up out of the bed. Come on, somebody. But there is more to be acquired and achieved and to be experienced in the kingdom than what we've tapped into. Can you say amen to that? So because of that, God has us teaching the gospel. 
<clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to say this too. I want to say this because I want you to, want you to hear me. Uh, I hope the baby doesn't bother you because he certainly doesn't bother me. He's, he's just feeling his prophetic urge and, and uh, <laughs> come from a good line, family line. Um, <laughs> but with that being said, what I want you to know, I want you to know that I've said this and I'm going to say this and it's going to be the premise for what I build into today. We're still talking about the book of Galatians. Now, everybody, I use the disclaimer, pulling your religious toes. Most people don't really, I think most of you guys get that, all right? Uh, what, I'm, what I'm meaning by that is allow, stop allowing what you think to be true to be true in your life. And rather, listen, replace it with what the word of God says is true and let that be true in your life. If you do that, you're going to be successful. Not just in church, but in, in society. Come on now. If the only place we're successful and victorious is in this in this place where we're having services, it's pretty pitiful. Yeah, that's true. Amen. OK, now, with that being said, I don't believe I've, and, and some of you, I'm telling you, pull your religious toes and I'm going to say it for the second time. Don't let me say it more than three times. OK. <laughs> church is not for unbelievers. Amen. The church, as you know, it is not for unbelievers. <laughs> Without raising your hand, without raising your hand, every time I say that, somebody, Bishop, somebody raises their hand. Without raising your hand, how many unbelievers are sitting in the room today? And you say, well, because you don't have mission efforts. No, that's not, that's not, that's very little to do with it. No missionary reached out to me. The word caught me. One night, the word caught me. It caught me right in the midst of my mess. Right? You guys know the story? Eight years of marriage, on the way to the divorce court. Things were rough. They were terrible in our lives. And the word of God hit my life, hit my heart. So I say that because this same apostle, the apostle Paul, says that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. For it is the say power of God unto salvation. So what God does is he uses his gospel and the same writer, Paul, writes over in, in Romans 10. He says, how can they hear except there be a preacher? Right. So so preaching, teaching, the delivery of the message, just to say it that way, is always going to be relevant. Whether or not you have props and games and giveaways and all this other stuff, that stuff has its place. But that is not the gospel and it will not replace the gospel. But the devil's working hard to try to do that. Can you say amen to that? So having said that, the, that the church is not for sinners and I'll, I'll clean up a little bit. You guys will be all right. Uh, but with that being said, who is it for? It's for us, the believers. To come into a place of understanding, unification, working together for the fulfillment of the glory of God's kingdom. To bring in as many sheep as we can. So if the church isn't the place, guess who is the place? It's your home. It's your job. huh? It's your gym. It's all those places that you go in the marketplace. It's all those places that you go to. That's where God is sending you after you get built up in here. Once you take once you are convinced, once you are convinced that what you're saying is accurate, then you'll tell somebody. But until you get convinced that what what this book says is true. Not what I'm saying. Isn't that right? Yes. Study to show yourself approved. Yes. Yes. OK, so with and, and, the, and you won't be ashamed. So what I'm saying to you is, is that the purpose of even today's message, but the purpose of you coming here is so that you can get so confident and trust God. Without trusting God, nothing in Christianity works. Amen. And so therefore, listen, so therefore a sinner doesn't know that this life works. Because they don't trust God. But you trust God. I said you trust God. Y'all were louder earlier. You trust God. Right, we'll deal with y'all later. Anyway. <laughs> Galatians 2 Galatians 2 and we'll get into some things I'm going to pray first and we'll just open the word of God and see where the Holy Spirit takes us amen? amen Heavenly Father we just thank you so much my Lord my God Jesus you are absolutely everything that makes life worth living I thank you God that without you I can do nothing but with you I can do all things through both your name your power your anointing and you are the anointed one of heaven I thank you now that your place is now in heaven as the heavenly high priest who sits and regulates all of the goings on of heaven and all of the goings on of earth. I thank you that you ever lived to make intercessory prayer. In other words, 
You are my go my go between. You are the one who bridges the gap between my life and the kingdom of God. And you're always saying good things about me. I pray that you would allow me by the power of the Holy Spirit to articulate your word in such a way that there is nothing that will leave uh, be left on the table. As it were, God, we will receive the full portion of your anointing of your table that has been prepared for us. According to Psalm 23, we'll receive it all by the power of the Holy Ghost. We declare let them that have ears to hear, hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. If you agree with that prayer, can you say amen this morning? Amen. Galatians 2, I'm going to read from, give me 45 minutes, please. Galatians 2, I'm going to read from uh, where I left off last week. Uh, I left off where, anybody, can anybody tell me? I know where I left off. I'm just asking to see who was OK, never mind. Y'all need to get never, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I shouldn't even go on there. <laughs> Y'all might as well lighten up. OK, Galatians 2. Yes. Tw ver I, I left off at verse 21, but I'm going to start. I'm going to start at 20. And before I do that, I want to say something else along the lines of what I just got done talking about. If church is not for unbelievers, what is this book then? It's for disciples. It's for believers. OK, uh, I'll say this. Uh, somebody asked me last week. They said, you know, I didn't understand the comment about you saying that God's not concerned about our sin. OK, well, what I said was that. But what I'm saying to you is that God, because he was concerned, not is. There's a difference, right? Because he was concerned, he sent Jesus. Now, Jesus is not coming back down to deal with anybody's sin ever again. Read the book of Hebrews because you've already done it. Now, listen to me. This book was not written to sinners. Amen. So when Paul is talking here, he's talking to people that are believers. He's trying to make them disciples. Isn't that what we're called to do in this in this church? We're not just here to get. I want people to come just like you do. But I'd rather have a healthy church than a full church. You know, well, isn't that where sick people are supposed to come? No, sick people are supposed to get healed. And if you come around here, you're going to get healed because I'm not going to I'm not going to tolerate any less than your healing. Now, what you tolerate is up to you. All right. All right. All right. So so it's having understood that. And I got to say this, I got I got let me I, I want to read. Last time it took me a while to read. It might take me a while this morning <laughs> um, because it was written under believers. Most of the New Testament was written, uh, was written to believers. Most of the New Testament was written to who? Believers. The Old Testament as a type and shadow, as, as is commonly known, uh, was there to help steer us where? To Christ. Y'all know this. So because its intent was to steer us to Christ, but the problem with the Old Testament was it was mired in what? The, the law. OK, uh, I said this to somebody. Uh, oh, gee, we were talking yesterday. I can't remember. It was yesterday or day before. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to I'm going to challenge all you guys. This is my experiment this morning before I get. I'm just I'm just rolling wherever the Holy Spirit takes me. Is that OK? This is my challenge. OK, everybody acknowledge that you're hearing me and that you're listening to me out front of the building. If you look to your right, when you walk out, you will see something that you have never seen before. I saw it when I came in. Right. I won't tell you what it is, but there is something there. When you go out of the building, out of the main doors, just to the right, there is something that you've never seen before. Right. Y'all got that? I challenge all of you not to look when you go outside. You know why? Because the power of the word has just entered your heart. Now, most of you are going to say, what was he talking about? You see, listen, listen. Now, this is very valid. Right. That's the difference in life in Christ and the law. The law tells you what you cannot do. It tells you what you cannot accomplish. It tells you that all of these things you have to do in order to receive God's best. Y'all gonna say amen on this side or I need to go over there? <laughs> read it. Read it for yourself. I submit to you that everything, listen, everything written before the book of Acts needs to be considered under the old covenant. Am, am I right about that? 
Now, why do I say that? Because Jesus could not, I said this last week or the week before, could not, uh, the word is ratify the new covenant until he took what? His blood and placed it on the mercy seat in heaven. So that means everything before that act God, how do you, was something that I should be able to consider as a promise, but not a commandment. And what we've done is we've considered, we've looked at the Moses and the tablets and the Ten Commandments, and we've done our best not to break those. And they told us, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Am I the only one that ever heard that? Couldn't go to baseball, couldn't go to sporting events, couldn't go to movies, couldn't do this. Come on now, women couldn't wear pants. That would negate most of y'all in this place today. Come on now, women couldn't preach the gospel. You name it, there was a law for it. My point in saying that is because that has what that's what has been spoken into most of our hearts. And it has registered and caused us to look at the new covenant askew. And and any time you look at something and it's just off, if I was if I were uh, uh, like Mandy, an architect, if I were an architect and my measurement was off just just a fraction of a degree, it would throw everything off. And, and because our foundation, and particularly here with, with Galatians, the foundation of the Galatians, say this with me, the foundation of the Galatians was in jeopardy. Now you need to understand it as we read Galatians 2, okay? Verse 21, I'm going to read this from the uh, expanded Bible. Uh, verse 20, I'll start there. I was, and I'm just going to keep right, reading right through Galatians 3, okay? I was put to death on the cross, or have been crucified with Christ. I do not live anymore. You need to mark that because that's important. I do not live anymore. Tommy does not live anymore. And neither do you. It is Christ who lives in me. I still live in my body. See that? Right? I'm still alive. I didn't go out and hurt myself. I'm still alive. I live in my body. But I live by, say, faith. Faith Faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself to save me. That's what the word salvation means, right? Right? By verse 21, by saying these things, I am not going against or I do not nullify God's grace. Just the opposite, he says. If the law could make us right with God, then Christ's death would be useless or in vain. Verse uh, chapter three, verse one. He says, you, King James says, oh, foolish Galatians. One translation that I was studying says, oh, stupid Galatians. If I call some of y'all stupid, you would probably never come back again. I didn't call you stupid. I said I didn't call you stupid. The Bible says foolish. Okay? He says here, who has tricked you? Who has, listen, cast a spell on you or bewitched you? You were told very clearly about the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Right? Tell me this one thing, he says. How did you receive the Holy Spirit? Let's keep reading. Did you receive the Spirit by following the works of the law? Everybody say no. No, you received the spirit because you heard the good news and believed it. That's very, very vitally important to your salvation. Mm. (laughs) Okay. Look up at me. I'm going to pause. I may not go any further than that. We'll see. We have been taught. Come here, Randy. You're sitting on the edge. Come here. We have been taught, listen to me, look up at me. I know if y'all taking notes, that's fine. Just stand right here for me. That the way to salvation is this. Do you confess your sins? Okay, he nods in affirmative. Were you a sinner? Are you a sinner? Well, no, be, be a sinner, right? <laughs> I, should have said, I should have said that up front, okay? <laughs> be a, say, but, but he's got it, right? Okay, all right, all right, all right. So so and then so here's what I want you to and I'm just as guilty as you are. You know, all right. Confess your sin, yada, yada, yada. Lift your hands, throw some water on you, whatever. (laughs) Bam. Okay, (laughs) take it. Take your seat. Thank you. So so listen. So we have been more caught up in the act. In in, in the in the uh, uh, formula of salvation than the God of salvation. The God of salvation says, if you believe on me, John, 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 John seven, I mean, excuse me, Luke seven, I think 32, don't quote me to it, 32, 38. He says, Jesus says, if you believe on me, as the scriptures have said, out of your bellies will flow rivers of living water. 
Okay, so because we've been caught up and been formula minded, we've lost the, the, the understanding of what Paul says here. He says, because you heard the good news and believed it, that's how you got the power of God in your life. Yes. And I submit to you, that's still how it comes. Yes. It doesn't come. Oh, help me, God. <laughs> it doesn't come because you pray so much. Yes. I didn't say you shouldn't pray. Do not go out of here and say, well, you said you shouldn't pray. I didn't say that. I'm saying you're going to have to start believing something. You're going to start believing that if Jesus is Lord of all, then he's Lord over all. And he, if he's got the power to save at the time of the writing of the book of Galatians, then he's got the power to save throughout eternity. And what the devil does is he tries to in, in, inject uh, or interject just a little bit of, of, of doubt or unbelief, which causes your foundation to shift. Because your focus is no longer on what he did, but what you did. What I want you to do is I want you to get over the fact, turn it, hold your place there, turn to 1 John uh, 1. I want you to get over the fact and the reality of sin. And I say, again, I say to the, to the audience that's watching, I'm not saying that sin doesn't exist. I'm saying that sin doesn't have rule over me. And I don't have, I don't have a sin consciousness. John, John 1, 1 John 1, you got it? Uh, I guess I need to turn there. If I'm going to ask you to turn there, I need to turn there myself. Hallelujah. Yeah, there it is. Look at verse 8. If you have it, say amen. He says, if we say we have no sin, now I'm not saying that. Are you? No. I'm saying your sin has been paid. I'm saying it has been dealt with. I'm saying it has been cared for and forgiven. The only way it comes up again is you, not Jesus. He says here, he says, verse, again with verse 8, he says, uh, if we say we have no sin or have no sin nature or are not guilty of sinning, we are fooling or deceiving ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But, say but. but. The conjunction changes everything. Yes. Sin nature, every one of us, every one of us had a sin nature when we were born. Yes. Absolutely every one of us. From Billy, Billy Graham to uh, St. Augustine, you name it. You know, who, whoever. That's the way you get into this planet. Right. That's how you got here. But he says here, let's let's look at he says. Uh, we are fooling ourselves and the truth is not in verse nine. But if we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins because we can trust God to do what is right. Or he is faithful and just. Your, your King James would probably say he will cleanse, say cleanse us from all wrongs we have ever done. If we say, verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make God a liar and we do not accept God's teaching. OK, look, turn back over to Galatians. Why is this significant? Because, again, John is writing to those who have already confessed their sins. As Christians, we got to stop this practice. We got to stop the practice of of pulling scriptures out of context to fit our our charismatic evangelical word of faith need. Got to stop that. I mean, you know, you can't you can't tell the devil to flee from you if you don't submit to God first. And a lot of people say, well, I command the devil to flee, but you ain't submitted to God. Right. And so you, it, it's hard for me to pull, pull the pull the Holy Ghost slot machine lever and say, God, bless me. Bless me, Jesus. Hey, and you ain't paying no tithe. Oh, that didn't go over very well at all. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying that, you know, well, do, do you have to tithe? You ain't have to. That's you. I want to. Oh, I better. I better. I, 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 Y'all were good until I started talking about that. huh? All they do is talk about money. Well, that's what you need. There's two things you need sitting in this room today. I don't even have to know where you live, what kind of house you, you have or what kind of car you drive. You need good health and money. And the church don't want to talk about either one. And that's all. Because the devil is a lie. Yes. So you're going to hear it here. Amen. Go back to Galatians. Hurry. Woo. Glory to God. Okay. Verse 2 says, Galatians 3, 
verse 2. He says, tell me this one thing. How did you receive the Holy Spirit? Did you receive the Spirit by following the works of the law? The answer is no. You received the Spirit because you heard the good news and believed it. Now, let's keep going. Verse 3. Are you so foolish? There he goes again. You began your life in Christ by the Spirit. Now, are you trying to make it complete by your own power? human effort or the flesh. Can I tell you that there's a lot of people that stop at the door of salvation and when they stop there, they start making salvation more of a ritual than a lifestyle. Yes. Yes. Born again, now what? Now what you gonna do? What you gonna do with your happy, born again, good looking self? What you gonna do? Come to church? I better go over here. My brother said that'd be a good start. And it is, but most people stay at the starting point. They'll never leave it. They'll never leave it. See, 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 if I had if I had that mentality and I and I was growing up in it, I grew up in it like many of you. You know, it's all about the ritual. You know. I can't even do it right. You know, you know, your hands folded. What difference your hands folded mean? What, what difference is if, if you standing and praying and kneeling and praying? Does it matter? Only to religious people and see what the Apostle Paul encountered. Now, <laughs> I, OK, this is my last one. Really, this is it. Pull in your religious tongue. I can hear you. But they told me I'm supposed to kneel when I pray. And so if, if the only way you feel like you can get a prayer through is on your knees, then you go for it. But if you can't get out the hospital bed to get on your knees. Tell me, let me know how that worked out for you. All right. All right. I'll keep going. <laughs> Y'all right. I'm just saying. So he says by your own, by your own power. And that's what he was talking about. The human efforts of the flesh. That's what the legalist or the Judaizers, as the scripture calls them. That's what these legal people were doing. I'm going to read on down through uh, verse six, I think. Verse four, were all your experiences wasted? He says, I hope not. Verse five, does God give you the spirit and work miracles among you because you follow the law? Answer is no. He does these things because you heard the good news. Say this with me. And I believe it. I believe it. Tell your neighbor, I believe, it. I believe it. If you don't believe it, you shouldn't be here today. Too many preachers don't believe the word. Bishop. Huh? Too many preachers caught up in their own theology and their own intellect and their own philosophy and their own own. Uh, 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 the Apostle Paul said too much intellect has made you mad. You are people are consumed with what they think about God, not what they know about God. It is only what you know about God and know about his covenant that will work in your life. Amen. And if there's a part you don't believe, it is not going to work. Ha ha ha. Ooh, he said intimacy. Absolutely true. You, you know, I, I mean, I know this woman. I don't know where we were yesterday. Uh, yeah, the other day we had gone somewhere and, and she asked me a question and I, I wasn't going to give up the answer. I wasn't. You remember what I'm talking about now? Okay. We're driving in the car. She says, well, who is uh, such and such and so and so? I said, I ain't telling. So we got to our destination, <laughs> got out. Went for what we were going to do. And then uh, we got settled in a little bit. She, she didn't forget that I didn't answer her. <laughs> that mind was working. I mean, from the time she asked the question, the mind was looking for an answer. It just wasn't coming from me. And so we've been, we've been married 35 years, been together longer than that. And so she said, I know who it is. And she gave me a name. And she was absolutely right. She said, you can't fool me. <laughs> She knows she, you know, this is, and this is my point. I know you. Amen. God's not trying to trick you. That's good. That's good. And you certainly can't trick him. Yes. He knows you. Yes. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Keep, keep, put, put your, flip over to, flip over to uh, chapter four real quick. Let me see. Uh, huh? Hang on a second. Let me let me find this. Let me find this. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh huh. Thank you, Father. Say hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I, I'll find it in just a second. Huh? Galatians four. Galatians four. Galatians four. 
See, if y'all were in the spirit, y'all already have it. I'm just kidding. Don't. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Stop being so serious. <laughs> uh, it might be. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, hallelujah. Let's see. Let's see what eight says. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but it, give me a King James Bible. Give me King, who got a King James Bible? No, I don't want that. I might mess that up. Okay, that's right. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Chapter four. I am God. I'm way ahead of myself, but that's okay because I'm. That's the only one I'm reading. He says in chapter four, same book. He says, "How be it then?" He's talking to the same group of people. When you knew, when you didn't know God, how many in your lifetime have gone through a period of your life where you've not known God? Every hand needs to go up. Okay. You didn't know. And some of us, like me, you didn't really know what you think you knew about God. Right? They, they, told, me, they told me that I had to, uh, oh, shout out Kodi Besser. I can't say it no more, so y'all take it on record. Okay? They told me that I had to fast to get God to move. That's not true. You show it to me. When they fasted, what they did is move all obstacles and hindrances to hearing from God out of the way. He was already there. He didn't go anywhere. He's still there. But food and fun and all this other stuff had gotten in the way. Right. But, but if I if, if, if I tell you that, if I say, you know what, you got, you know, you, you know, you come to me, somebody, somebody, you, you, you just said somebody bought a house in your family. OK, if I say, well, before they can buy a house or you, let's say you tell them that before you buy a house, you need fast for six weeks. They're going to be some hungry people. <laughs> and what what's going to happen after six weeks? Right. That don't make no sense. But, but if you tell them, listen, baby, fasting will help you clear the, 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 the blocks out of the way. Maybe fast for, for a little while. The Holy Spirit will tell you how long to do it. See the difference? And then you got people that run up, uh, pastor, I, I, I need to, I need to, I, I want a husband. Don't come to me. I'm married. <laughs> You know, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm just saying I, I can't keep saying it because I said I was going to say it three times. But look, if you ain't finding no woman, in, uh, no man in here, go on a dating site. I better I better read this and keep moving. I, I better read this. And keep, make sure it's Christian and make sure you vet that man or woman before you set up a date. Oh, man. See, y'all see, see, see. OK. OK, well, let me find verse eight. He says here, how be it then you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods. In other words, I can say it in a, in a street connotation because I used to do this. When I was in the world, I was living high on the world and literally high on the world, doing what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And I didn't have no problems being wherever the party was. Now, some of y'all been little goody two shoes all your little lives. You don't know what I'm talking about. Mm, but after you turned 21, you kind of started getting the picture, even if you weren't, even if you were all in the church all your life. Because they told you don't go out there. And the first thing you want to do is go out there to see why they tell you not to go out there. And next thing you know, you start tipping around and then you go out there and then you come into church. And now you feel like a hypocrite because God didn't say that to you, but somebody did. I wish I could get a better amen than that. He says here, let me. But now after that, you have known God or rather are known of God. How are you going to turn back again to the stuff that's weak in this earth? Can I tell you that your strength is not sufficient to get the job done? I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how many weights you lift. I don't care how toned you are. It is just not enough. Something can come and cripple your movement when you least expect it. That's in a physical sense. Spiritually speaking, most Christians have been crippled by uh, uh, ideologic thinking that does not come from God, but it came from man's own mindset that this is the way for me to get to God. So just just we'll get to we'll get to chapter four. Look, look OK, I'm going to say a couple of things and I'm going to let you out of here. The book of Galatians is literally, this is what I, I said a few weeks ago, and I tried to get, get it across again. It's like it's the declaration of emancipation from all legalism concerning being accepted in Christ. It is like a declaration of emancipation. I mean, everybody knows for the most part, if you went to school any, any time, you know about the Emancipation Proclamation. That was, that was an, an edict by then President uh, Abraham Lincoln that set captives, black Americans, free. Say amen to that. OK, so with that being said, many of them were set free and still didn't know it. 
The Galatians had been set free and Paul caught them turning from their freedom back to slavery. And they started trying to find a way to make themselves worthy without Jesus. It ain't going to happen. And so what people do is they mirror, help me, Lord, they mirror or mimic what they grew up in. I grew up in a, as many of you know, strict Pentecostal background. But I am not, my wife asked me, she said, what kind of church is ours? You know, a life church. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I got Pentecostal in me. I got some Baptists. I don't even know where it came from. I got Lutheran along the line. Picked up a little Episcopalian and rubbed off on my elbow somewhere. I bumped into somebody. You feeling me? Come on now. You know I'm kidding, but you know what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. What matters is the life that comes through that book that you hold and your belief in him, who is the author of the book, who you have yet to meet because you're going to meet him when you go to heaven in the flesh. Oh, help me, Lord. So it is a declaration of emancipation from all legalism. In other words, the word emancipation means being set free from legal, social or political restrictions. In that context, a woman can be a pastor. In that context, who's getting get tight now, boy. Just because you're divorced doesn't mean that you are disqualified. Well, doesn't the scripture say? Yeah, it does. Take you and your Bible and go out there and hear what it says. In that context, it doesn't matter what your channel was to get to God. It only matters that you are with God. If I grew up Catholic and all I knew was, you know, the the rosary and and gone through catechism and and. Uh, I've got my rosary beads and I've got you know, all these other things, the Pope and all that kind of stuff. Listen, I'm telling you that I know that there is no person between me and God Amen. but the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus, the high priest, has been made my brother. I am his son, his servant. And Paul calls himself a slave. So I, ain't got, I don't lose nothing for being in him. But there is no man that's going to sit over me and tell me that God said this and God said this. And you better not do outside that. The devil is a liar. I don't need I don't need Allah and Muhammad to tell me, you know, how I get to heaven by and have a hundred thousand virgins. What I don't need. Look, I got one wife. Don't need no more ladies in my life from a from a from a relational standpoint of love. She meets all my needs according to her life in Jesus Christ. Say amen. Amen. So what what am I looking for some outside validation for? How much more Jesus do you need to believe that he's on the inside of you? Let me keep going. Legalists do not spend much time, if any at all, in this book of Galatians. It's just not common. It's just not something they do. Romans 10 and 4, you can write this down. The Bible says that Christ is the end of the law to everyone that believes. And, and many of you say, well, you know, see, our, our, our modern Western idea of, of law comes from the state trooper out there. Mm-hmm. I know. I know I'm telling the truth because because. You don't really bump up against laws in a in a, a tangible sense every day. The only law that you bump up against, not not societal, but a governing law that we you and I bump up against every day, but we don't think about is what? No, not that one. I just said something else. Gravity. And I don't care what reformation you are. I don't care whether you male, female. I don't care if you don't know yet. I don't care what you think and all that. If you violate the law of gravity, you're going you to hit something. Come on now. I remember, I remember uh, I don't know who it was. I think it might have been Keith Moore. But I remember somebody said, you know, uh, they were, they were fry, uh, I think Brother Copeland was relating a story and he was talking to Brother Jesse. Um, Brother Jesse said to him, he said, Brother Copeland, they, he was coming back from a meeting. Brother, uh, Brother Jesse's not a pilot. But he said, uh, Brother Copeland, Brother Copeland. I almost landed the plane. But I, I, I don't steal my thunder. You know it. Hush. And so Brother Copeland said, you know, if you ever know, watch Brother Copeland, he stands like this. He said, Jesse, 
to almost land is to crash. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, so, but in violation of that, now here's another, here's another uh, a, a law that you have to also understand. There's a law of life and there is a law of death. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm not, that, now I'm pulling my, my not, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny at all, but I'm pulling my comedic self back intentionally. I have tried in my natural life to violate the law of life. You read into that what you want to read into it. If I had been successful, I would not be standing here today. And what the devil tries to do is he tries to help you violate the law of life by putting sickness and disease on you. And if you don't know that you're supposed to talk to that sickness and tell it in the name of Jesus Christ, I am a son of the most high God. I am a tither. The, the, the devourer has been rebu rebuked over my body by his stripes. I am healed. First Peter 2 24 says by whose stripes I was healed. If I was healed, then I'm healed now and I will be forever healed. You will not take me out. But the church has got to believe that to say that. Hey, hey, boy, I tell you what. So, so legalists don't spend much time here. Um, you know, with the Galatians, it's funny because Paul, you know, one day they're all excited about his being there. Pastor Tommy. Now, I'm going to tell you some things you won't find in this book, too, though, as compared to some of his other writings. But then the next day, they're trying to stone him. Didn't they do that with Jesus? Today, modern day stoning doesn't come from people lifting up rocks. You know where it comes? Social media that gets on there and critic listen, 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 and criticizes people they do not know. And steps into arenas, particularly political arenas or other social arenas. You ain't got, ain't nobody got no business being in my wife and I's relationship. You may not like my wife, but your mouth on her makes you somebody who's trying to stone her. I ain't got to hear it because he does. See, that's old, old folks teaching, you know, uh, old folks who tell you, you know, don't tell your business. And some folks like to put business on a social platform. And then they're trying to figure out why they still stuck in that in that situation, because everybody out here without faith is yes. building that whole thing up. Yes. Mm, okay, I better move on because that ain't very popular. Let's keep going. <laughs> Galatians, Galatians is a very, listen, is a very stern, severe, and solemn message delivered by the apostle. Listen, now he is unapologetic. And unlike the writings to the Corinthian churches, he does not at any time commend their behavior, nor does he make an attempt to correct their conduct. Think about this now. He does not request prayer. <laughs> he does not mention those who normally travel with him. You know, how he normally talks about Paul and Titus and different ones. He doesn't do that. But the gravity of the message does not make time for civility or cordiality. In other words, he ain't got time to play with these folks. They are in danger. Can I tell you today that the United States of America, let's hone it in just a little bit geographically. The Midwest. I'm going to go a little bit deeper than that. Iowa, right in the heart of the heartland, is in trouble because they, they, like the Galatians, have been turned and bewitched into thinking that they know more than God. Yeah. And they're trying to get to a God that they do not know. Yeah. And the more we remain silent, the harder it is for them to ever find out the true and living God. I am an ambassador, the, the, the apostle writes. I am an ambassador for God, for Christ. Yeah. And when I go, all of heaven goes with me. Yeah. Whether I feel like it or not, I recognize that angels are all around me. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is on the inside of me. The power of God is at my disposal. So if you're sick, listen, I'm not going to talk about it, but I'm going to talk to it and tell you, be healed in the name of Jesus. And if you are unsaved, you need to get saved. What are you waiting for? Amen. See the difference? So the foundation, these, these Judaizers have come in. David, you know this, you know, just as, as a longtime teacher. They come in and they're trying to interject just a little bit of law keeping. You know, you know, you know, stand up, my sister, stand up real quick, stand up. You know, you know, I know, stand up, you too. You, yes, you know, and, and both of these are elders, by the way, you know. And so one elder, because he's a man, gets preferential treatment, but we love you too, daughter. Come on now. 
So, so somehow or another, she's, he's preferred over her because, you know, this is a boys club. And if I grow up thinking that, I'm going to find out, you know, well, you know, a, a, a woman should not usurp authority over a man. Can't shut up because you don't know what you're talking about. Let me tell you something. The only way she can usurp authority over me is that somehow or another she is not submitted to me. She can't submit to God and not be submitted to me. I don't need her to say what you made. Well, she don't, that don't, wait, that don't wait on me hand and foot. I don't want all that. I want a woman that I can go to, or a wife, rather. I want a wife that I can go to and lay down at night and know that ain't nothing coming my way that I'm not expecting. Yeah. Ain't no hot oil or hot grease going to hit my head. Yeah. I can lay down and I know I'm all, it's all good. She submitted to God. And in the process, we are blessed. So Paul doesn't have time to play. We don't have time to play. Huh? You are under attack. Glory to God. I was, I was, but they, I was, I was calculating the other day. <clears throat> Sometimes you need to take inventory. You need to take spiritual inventory. Has something slipped in your life? Are you not walking in the vi uh, miracles and the victories that you're supposed to walk in? Don't blame God. And y'all need us. We, we need us. We, I'll say we. I did say we, right? We need to stop blaming the devil for everything. Some of the stuff is self-inflicted. So I took him into her. I was like, okay, Lord, enough is enough of this. He said, well, I've been waiting on you. Where you been? That's what Paul's saying to these folks. Are you so foolish? Have you forgotten? I know, I know, I know, I know we don't go back to the old time way. I ain't suggesting go. Now take me back. Yeah, go back to the old time way, old time way. We can feel the glory of the, something like that. No, I'm not going back. But what I am recognizing that, that with all of their lack of education and their lack of, lack of understanding of the Greek and the Hebrew and all of their lack of exegesis and, and, and not understanding how to rightly divide the word of truth, that, that they, a lot of these old folks had power from a clean life and they, they took whatever little bit they had and they used it to destroy the works of the devil. They didn't need all those things. All they need was faithfulness and commitment and to say that, you know what, I don't care what somebody comes and tries to tell me, I'm going to stick with God. Demons leaping out of windows and, and just all kinds of stuff getting broken off of people's lives. Now nah, we so sedity and so fine and so well to do. We live in a great nation and we ain't got no power. Paul was a man who by experience could state very matter of factly how easy it is to be on the wrong path and not realize it. Except the power of Christ be, Christ be revealed in you. Let me, let me draw this picture real quick. Paul is on the Damascus road, is he not? He's going doing what he believes is God's will. And he's getting out here, he's persecuting these people. How dare these people, let me have some water please. How, how dare these people rise up and they somehow another think for, you can put it over here. Think for some, you know, how dare they call on this Jesus? This Christ. I am, I am from, the, from the school of Gamaliel. I am a Pharisee, a Hebrew of the Hebrew, born into the tribe of Benjamin. I know what to do. I know how it's supposed to go. This is Paul talking, Saul talking. He's out here with a zeal and a hunger to do right, but he's on the wrong path. We got people out here that are running around doing all kinds of crazy things. You know, when people say, well, the devil, God told me to do it. God, I don't believe God has ever told anybody to go out and take somebody else's life. How are you going to take a life when you don't have the right to give it? Say what you want. I don't care. You write me a nasty letter. I ain't reading it. No way. Anyway, so with that being said, he's, he's out here doing this. And all of a sudden, it is the revelation of who Jesus really is that captures his, his attention and says, Saul. Wham! He's on his face. You know, you, we can't be caught up doing what seems good versus what is good. Uh, many churches 
we try to we try to limit that here. Many churches go out and try to do a little bit of everything. With 100 people, you can't do a little bit of everything. You got to start making some things good. Do it well. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo, Jesus, I feel like preaching this morning. I'm trying to. It, it, it. <laughs> His focus in this writing is on, say, foundation. In other words, what is foundation? Foundation is their belief system. Right. And it is under attack. How and why they came into the faith is in peril and is in jeopardy. Close your Bibles. Close your Bibles. Um, during the course of my study on this, I, I was reading after one. He doesn't call himself a theologian, but I think he is. But. I won't mention his name, it's not important. Um, and he said this, he said the parallel, and he said this years ago, years, back in the 70s, I think it was. The parallel between the Christian church today and the Galatian church is almost spot on in the, in the way they think. The Galatians had a, had a funny habit. If something sounded good, they'd run to it. They, they, they would, I'm going to say it like this. They, they were into the trend of the day. They were into the hashtag, but they didn't know to call it that. It was important for them how they looked rather than how, how they were. Now, you can see that picture all over a lot of our churches. It, it was very significant to them to make sure that they sat at the right seat and that they had the right networking going on. And so when the Galatians, when Paul comes into, and there was no one Galatian church, please understand that it was a region that he ministered in. But when he, when he comes into one church, he's coming in destroying all of the necessity for you, for them to be circumcised. Amen. I equate circumcision from the, from the law of God, I equate it to the worst form of religion that you can find today in some of our churches. Here's what I mean by that. If, if I go into, I'm going I'm to I'm pick on what I know. I'm not going to pick on what I don't know. If I go into a church that we grew up in called Kojic. Anybody feeling me? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, okay. Or if I go into the, the to, to, let's, uh, uh, let me pull that back. Let me say Pentecostal. And I go into a Pentecostal church. If I am not exuberant, demonstrative, there's something that most people think is wrong with me. Because I don't dance on cue like a monkey on a string. I wish I had a beat. I know y'all can't give me no beat, but that's, that's okay. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it for sake of time. Y'all know what I'm saying. Listen, if I were to go, if I were to go to, I'm going to pick on what I know now, a, a, a Lutheran church. And he said, do anything. That's what I'm demonstrating. Hardly look around. Everybody stand at the same time. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Sit at the same time and repeat exact. Don't don't you don't don't you talk in tongues. Don't don't you don't you go off the off the script. If I were to go to a Baptist church, well, <laughs> and it, and it depends on what degree whether they're fundamentalist. Come on now, and so so, so my what my point is that what these folks were, were encountering, what Paul is seeing, is that those things were more important than the reality of what they had been pulled out of. And you see it all over our churches today. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the state, United States of America is one of the most segregated places you will ever, ever see. You guys have no idea how unique this church is. Many of you don't. Huh? Some of you do. Not everybody. Why do you think it's a challenge? Why, why, you, why you think it's hard? Huh? Because you know why? 
Because he was, listen, hallelujah, I hear the spirit of the Lord, I'm going to say it. Because the Lord has, has literally summoned you for a higher degree of revelation. He's, listen, he summoned you for a higher degree of success in life. He wants you to do more than just, listen, that doesn't mean you look down on somebody that goes to this church or that church. It just means that, you know what? Listen, I am not going to ever get entrapped by legalism, by people that want to make me be what I have, want me to dress a certain way, want me to act a certain way. This is who I, I like to dance up and down the aisles because I get the free, even if I dance like a white guy and I can't really keep the rhythm, you know, at least, hey, don't knock my dancing because I see some of y'all brothers be all like this and all like this and all like this. Yeah, come on now. I just want to be me. I just want to enjoy the presence of the Lord. I don't care about all this stuff. If I got to go through all them hoops, I don't want to join. I don't want to be a part of your club. I just want to know that when I come to God by faith, if I declare the word of the Lord, he's on my side. He's going to do what he said he would do. He's going to show up when he said he would. Come on. That's all I want to know. That's all I want to know. Write this down real quick. God's grace is greater than our capacity to sin. God's grace is greater, not than your sin, but your capacity to sin. There might be some things sitting in this room right now you have done in your past. You need to you need to come to the realization, first of all, that that, you know, your past has no significance to who you are. Amen. None. None. I tell people all the time. I, I have no problem. You know, I've had people come to our office and sit and we talk and they tell, tell me this. And I'm just picking this one out of the blue because this is what the Holy Spirit laid in my heart. And maybe they've, they've had an abortion. That don't mean nothing to God. That don't mean nothing to God. And, and, and I'm going to tell you what I know to be true by faith. I can tell it to you because you, you're, you're mature enough to understand. You, you get, you, if, if that's something that has troubled you because you, you made a mistake, because that's what it was, you made a mistake, whatever the reason, doesn't matter. You know, things happen. But you now say, Lord, I need you. I believe in you. I, I'm, I'm your daughter, so I'm with you now. Okay? Guess what? When you get to heaven, guess who's going to raise that child? Come on now. You don't think the life just went poof, into oblivion, do you? Oh, y'all know better than that. Ah, Jesus, help me. So his grace, God's grace is greater than our capacity to say. Reason why I know that you can write this down. I'm not going to turn there. Second Corinthians 12 verses nine through 10. Second Corinthians 12. The apostle Paul begins to ask God for help. He says, God, I need help. I'm paraphrasing. But and, and he says, I asked him three times for this help. And Lord said, son, you know, Paul, you know, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, my grace is for sufficient for you when you were out there on the Damascus road and you didn't know who I was. My grace is for you. It's sufficient for you when you got out there and you were preaching the gospel and things weren't going right. And my, maybe you got frustrated, Paul, or whatever the case is. But my grace is also sufficient for you from this day forward, no matter what you're going to encounter. I don't care if you live to be 110 and somehow or another you miss the, miss the mark for the next 10 years or beyond as long as you come to God and repent Amen. his grace is sufficient for you Amen. and it can never not be Amen. stand to your feet I'm finished his grace is sufficient for your past present and future transgressions don't sit up here and look at me all cute I ain't never going to sin, Pastor. You just did. You lied. <laughs> you ain't fooling me. How I know? Because I'm the same way. I told you, I ain't perfect. You look, look, look to me like, oh, you know, don't put me on a pedestal. I, I, I don't want it. I resist it. You see me out there? Well, you know, I saw you doing this. And, and if you say I, you saw me with another woman, she's either going to be my sister, my daughter-in-law, or somebody else related to me. You ain't never going to see me with another woman. That's a lie. Yeah. It was you. No, it wasn't. <laughs> or maybe it was your brother. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Didn't I see you over here? Yeah, you probably did. You might have seen me over there. What was I doing? Oh, I don't know. I just saw you. You saw me going in. What were you doing over there? What you doing there? Just saying. 
Be careful. Be careful. Christians shouldn't go in bars. They better if the Holy Spirit tells them to. Amen. Amen. I don't care. Y'all ain't got to like me. That's okay. I'm going to tell you the truth. Smith, Smith, Smith Wigglesworth, Wigglesworth tells a story where he was, uh, well, he tells two different ones, but he was, he was sitting on a train and because of his lifestyle and who he was, um, and I'm abbreviating it all the way around, but people would come up to him and just repent because of the, 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 the glory and the power of God in his life. But he tells one particular story where he was, he was walking down the sidewalk in front of a bar. And people were staggering out. That's what people in bars do, y'all. And in, 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 in what, what we do as good Christian people, he's, he's out here staggering around. Now, if he's staggering, face this way, yep, just this way. If he's staggering around, then I, as a Christian, should not do this. Yeah, I'm not saying that you got to go up to everybody that's staggering around. But the Holy Spirit might say, hey, I want you to minister to him. I don't believe in ministering to drunk people. It's a lot of work. Let him sober up. Come on, let's go get some coffee. How you doing? Who are you? Well, God sent me. God sent me. Are you too ashamed to say God sent me? Come on now. This is life, right? And what the church does, it's easy to turn a blind eye and be real critical because, you know, I think the outfit that that girl had on was too tight. <laughs> Woo! Come on, let your hands. Let your hands. Let your hands. Today, I is at the direction of the Lord. Anybody wants to be born again, all you gotta do is believe on it. I didn't write it. The Lord wrote it. The Apostle Paul wrote it. The Apostle Paul tells and is telling Luke as, as he's writing, he's, he's, he's painting a picture and he tells a story uh, uh, where, where all of a sudden um, he's there and, and he's in jail, Paul and Silas, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And they're in jail and, and they're there because they preach the gospel. Hold this. They, they, they're there because they preach the gospel and, and the, the, they were thrown into the deep part of the jail, right? They're there. <clears throat> the Bible says... They're praising God at midnight. And all the doors flung open. How many doors have flung open in your life just because you praise God? I can say amen to that. And, and as the doors flung open, next thing you know, the jailer is in terror. OMG. Whoa. And he doesn't, the Bible doesn't account that he checked on any other prisoners but them. Because they were the most significant ones to the jailer. And, 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 and all of a sudden, you know, Paul cries out, Hey, don't do yourself any harm. Can I tell you, don't do yourself harm. It's just a lie. And, 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 and he says, he's, and I, he's, 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 I'm, you know, I'm paraphrasing, he's there and y'all didn't run? This has never happened before. I'm sure the gates had never flung open before. But the fact that, you know, if I'm a prisoner and a gate flies open, that's my invitation to flee. For most people. Hey, that's a blessing. Hey, that must be God. Paul, I believe, Silas heard they had been praising God and delighted themselves in the Lord. And, and, and I believe the Holy Spirit said, just don't you move. Just keep praising me. Can I tell you, I hear the Lord say this. I wasn't going to use the illustration, but there's somebody here who has been in a very tough position and you have been there for a long time. Don't move. Praise God. Come on, just praise him. Worship him. He has already taken care of the, of the, the bars and the gates that are keeping you, making you feel like you're just, it's almost like I, I'm, I'm putting my hand, it's almost like you have tunnel vision because all you can see is your problem. He's right there in the midst of it. But you have to cry out and say, listen, you are the God that inhabits the praises of your people. Where is the God of Elijah? Where, where is the God? Ha! Huh. I know you're near. So, so 
in conclusion, the jailer says, listen, I know you guys are important to the, to the governor. I know you guys have been raising Cain all over this region. They put you in my charge and you didn't run. You told me not to kill myself. Tell me, how do I get that kind of God? What must I do to be saved? Paul's answer was very succinct. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't say all this other stuff that we add to it. I know I'm not knocking that. I'm saying I get it. But he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. This morning, I want you to bow your heads if you're with me, if you would. And I just want you to just kind of just worship the Lord kind of quietly. Would you do that? Just worship the Lord this morning. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to let you out of here. Father, I thank you now. Your people are here. They're gathered from near and far. Some young, some old, Lord God, some in between. Some at a place in life where they're just not sure of what tomorrow will bring. My father, my job today and my assignment has to been, has to, uh, been to minister hope, Lord God, and expectation. That no matter what they feel like they've done, it has all been covered by the blood of Jesus. I declare a spirit of repentance and contriteness in this place so that I am not going out to sin just because grace is there. No, 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 no. I come before you and, and openly confess my sin so that you would forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. This day is a line, is a day of demarcation. It is a day where I choose to go further in God than I've ever gone before. I choose to take the risk of not knowing how things are going to turn out. I choose to move my out of my comfort zone and take this message of the kingdom to somebody who I so I know who so desperately needs to hear it I pray today father for boldness and courage to come upon your people let the anointing power of the Holy Spirit just overwhelm these people in the name of Jesus I pray for those watching by by way of video God bless them where they are let them rise up out of sick beds. Let them call their relatives and say, I gave my life to the Lord this morning. I simply believe on him. I believe that he saved me. I believe that he delivered me. I believe. And it is so. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, we pray right now for the great, tremendous grace that is more than sufficient for us. Would you join hands with somebody? Don't, you, don't go across the aisle. I want that intention. Just keep the aisle clean. But just join hands with somebody. Oh, bless your name. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord say, the reason why I'm doing this today is because who you're holding hands with is significant to the kingdom, and that's why he seated you next to them. And I, I submit this to you because I could say this about my wife. I think I know, like she said, I know you, but I don't know everything about her. I don't know the things that she only tells God and doesn't tell Tommy. I pray for that thing. I pray for that thing. Now you pray for your neighbor. I pray for that thing that is not, is, 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 there is no desire to communicate in public. I pray for that thing that needs a divine intervention now. Not later, Father. It needs it now. They need you now. They, their marriage is, is in turmoil and trouble. They need you now. Their children have been diagnosed with, with, with sickness and disease. They need you now. Father, I, I, I'm on my way to the bankruptcy court. I need you now. They're getting ready to repossess my car. My husband is leaving. My wife is leaving. She's gone. He's gone. I need you now. Father, I've lost my job. I, or they're threatening me with this. I need you now. And I pray it for my sister. I pray it for my brother. Do what you do be God you know them yeah we know you but you know them and we thank you for knowing us for the great privilege of allowing us to stand in your presence and minister to your people angel of the Lord now I give you an assignment to go with with these people as is your charge to keep them in all their ways don't let any hurt or harm come their way let there may be a thousand that fall and ten thousand that fall but it will not come near them Father, I speak to the water levels that are rising, trying to threaten flooding. And I tell you to abate and to cease and desist. In the name all over this nation, not just Iowa, but all over. In the name of Jesus. Enough is enough now. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We bless your name.